All right, it's Washaholic Wednesday, and today I'm going to be talking to you about whether you should raise your prices, hold your prices, or lower your prices in 2021, and the reasons why you should do that. So I anticipate what will happen throughout the course of 2021 is you're gonna have contractors out there that kind of see what's happening with the economy and understand that there is gonna be a need for raising prices, which I'll explain in a minute. There will be others that are gonna believe that they should hold prices because their customers are struggling, so they, they shouldn't raise prices. And then you're gonna have those on the lower end that are, are struggling and believe they should make up for a loss in customer base because they've gone out of business or whatnot, or believe that they need to help their customers by lowering prices, and then they're gonna lower prices and believe they can make up through that by gaining market share. I think you're gonna see all three scenarios take place in the marketplace, but I'm telling you right now, I believe that those that hold prices and those that lower prices are probably on a path of going out of business relatively fast in 2021. But, and I'm gonna explain why. It has to do with inflation. But I wanna explain some stuff so that you get a better concept of what's going on in our economy. What happened in 2020 is something that we've never seen before at this rate that's taken place. But the first thing I wanna talk about, let's talk about our monetary supply. Years ago, the US dollar, and I'm gonna use the dollar sign here, was based on the gold standard. So there was gold that backed the US dollar. And this gold represented the gross domestic product. So there's only so much gold in existence that the government could have, or they could, they could literally add gold to the supply. But for the most part, there's a finite amount of gold that's in the world. And if you have a finite amount of monetary supply, and you're, what we can produce as Americans or in the US is our gross domestic product. If it grows, then let's say it, you know, on, on average, we grow at anywhere from two to 5%. So what that means is if you have a finite amount of monetary supply, like when it was based on gold and the economy grew at two to 5%, that means that if something costs $100, so let's use 100, in this particular year, it costs 100, and then you go into the next year and it grew, let's say it grew at 5%, then the following year, it's now gonna cost $95 because there's not enough monetary supply out there to supply the growth in what we've produced. So our dollar, our dollar would actually increase in value. Now, it's believed by our government and most of the experts that are involved in running our government that, uh, that there is a, a healthy inflation rate. So, so we have this, and, and before I go to that, several years ago, I think it was in the 70s, the dollar changed from being based on the gold standard to being based on our economy. So then it switched. You know, it's no longer based on gold. It's based on what, what happens in our economy. And that's, that's what happens with the dollar now. So we can print, can print endless amounts of dollars to increase the supply, which is what basically is happening today. But let's talk about this a little bit before I, I go into it. So we have this... The, the, these amount of dollars that are out there. And I talked about the growth in our economy. So now we have the, the GDP. And on average, it grows, let's, let's say it grows around 3%. So what the government actually does, because they believe that it's there's a healthy economy when there's inflation, that's 3%, right around that number. Generally in that, and I, I would say anywhere from three to, to 5%. And on average, most of us as business owners realize that you should probably raise your prices three to 5% a year because this is what happens. And, and they intentionally do this because they grow this pool of money right here to keep up with this growth and 
it, it actually causes inflation. So if this pool of money grows faster than the GDP, that's where you get inflation. Your, 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 your amount of dollars it takes to purchase something goes up instead of down. And that's why this pool grows. So that's normally what happens in our economy or here in the US and, and many other economies around the world. But something different happened this year because of COVID. So again, we have our monetary supply here that's, that's in our country. And this has grown substantially. And I probably should use a different size circle here because that makes it look like it, <laughs> like it, it grew by five times, but it really didn't. It probably, you know, something like this. This is probably the growth you saw in the monetary supply to keep up with this kind of what is considered healthy growth in the economy for inflation. So what we have this year is a GDP that most likely has gone down because of all the restrictions and the pullback in our ability to produce. I don't know what that number is, but let's just say it was, it's 10%. I don't know if that's low, high or whatnot, but I'm, I'm fairly certain that our GDP has, has reduced. Now the government has printed money this year and put a substantial amount into the economy to help those that are in need and to basically help stimulate and keep things flowing and running during the shutdown when people can't work. This has grown the, the money supply fairly significantly, and I'm, it's, it's over-exaggerated uh, by the circle I draw here if you wanna do comparisons, but my guess is we're somewhere between a 10% a to 20% increase in the monetary supply. Now, what does that mean? As I talked about this up here and what goes, goes on in these two examples, that means we're going to see a, a large inflationary rate. So it's going to go up considerably at some point. Um, I kind of expected to see a little bit of this sooner toward the end of the year, but I think we're gonna see now going into 2021, the impact of that. And they're even talking about more stimulus and more printing of money to put into the supply over 2021 with the, with some of the, the packages that are being presented now in Congress. So it's kind of scary what, what, I, what I think can happen. And we can see hyperinflation, any, you know, I think hyperinflation is, is around 15%, I, I, I think, I'm not sure. And so I'm just gonna say, there's predictions that say we can see inflation at a rate of 15 to 25% going into throughout 2021. Now, this, this is, can be very impactful. And, and, and by the way, if you have comments to add, please put them down below. I wanna hear what you have to say about this and what your thoughts are, because um, I think this is gonna be a very impactful year for those that, that can understand this and can prepare for it and be successful through 2021. But let me, let me clarify a little bit. Not everything will increase at the same rate. There's different sectors of the market and economy that, going, that are going to get hit in different waves and different uh, inflationary rates. Uh, luxury items will probably uh, go up the most. Certain income generating type things, investments will probably go up faster because uh, it will be harder for them to generate the revenue that they need to be uh, successful. But keep in mind, somehow you're going to have to hedge against this because the dollar you have today will be worth a lot less at, <laughs> at the dollar at the beginning of 2022. So we're at the beginning of 2021, I can guarantee you by the end of this year, it's not gonna be, it's not gonna go down just by three or 5%. It's gonna go down tremendously. And I wanna encourage you to think about how to survive this year because you're gonna need to raise your prices, you need to prepare, you're gonna need to be doing it in a, in a, in a, in a quick fashion uh, to pass on price increases to, to your customer base. Those that are, have the ability to do that this year and can pivot quickly enough, to transfer those costs on will be best positioned to survive through 2021. You may want to do it 
monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, but just think about how to do that so that you can get through 2021 and be able to pass those costs on to, to keep your margins you need to be a viable company. Okay, so uh, quick correction. I uh, just looked it up on Google with my camera guy here and hyperinflation is actually at 50% and they're predicting that there will be a small growth in the GDP for 2021, around somewhere between one to 2%, and which is good, but it still doesn't make up for the amount of money that's being printed and putting into the monetary supply. So everything I've said still holds true. And if you wanna see that video that I did earlier, in 2020, around the time the pandemic hit, I have a link for you here real quick for you to, uh, to check that out. And then if you really like what we're doing, give us some comments below. If you don't, give us comments too. Wanna to hear that feedback so we can be better for you and serve you better. Hey, and to follow our page, hit the subscribe. And if you hit the bell, you'll get notifications when we post new videos. And give us a thumbs up if you like the video. I'm Mike Kinderlight of the Dean of Power Watch at Power Watch University and powerwatch.com. Have a safe and successful week and check out that video I posted a while back.